Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here. I just want to create a short video here around how I believe you should set up your Power BI workspaces and, the, and some best practices around it. What I have definitely found in communication with a lot of those in our community and some, and some customers is that there's still a bit of confusion around how to create these workspaces and, and almost govern these workspaces. Okay, so I've come up with a few best practices and I'm going to show you uh, what, you know, some insights around how, how we do it internally uh, and then how also you can frame this up within your own organization. What I'm also going to do is I'm also going to just jump into the analyst hub here as well, um, which is our own internal uh, web develop uh, web tool that um, helps us with our productivity and collaboration around um, our Power BI initiatives. And I'm going to show you how I planned it out inside of here, just as an example. And you could see how you can do it in here or in, or in other tools that you might be using. But the the thing to start off with, the thing to think about um, when you are creating when you are creating um, a workspace inside of Power BI is what are the ultimate apps that you want to create? Okay, that is the key. Because what happens is you only at the moment within Power BI Online is that with your workspaces, you can only create one app per workspace. Okay, so it's best to think about, well, what apps do I want to create? Because the distribution of your insights is best uh, done via apps in a lot of cases, because what apps enable you to do is to consolidate a lot, all of the reports, all of the Power BI reports within one workspace, okay? And it's just a you know better experience when you when you do that. So an app uh, enables you to uh, curate, and you see I'm just jumping into a, a demo app that we 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 have created internally, and so you see here that we can we can jump through and um, very easily down this navigation um, pane on the left hand side we can click through into different parts of the report, but we can also um, have different um, different reports layered on top of here. So it's just a way to consolidate information really effectively, okay? And that is why. You know, you've got to think about these apps. So let's let's think about how this might work internally. You know, um, you might think, okay, well, you might say, okay, dep depending on the size of your organization, you might say, okay, well, we should have uh, an app based on marketing. We should have an app based on um, sales. We should have a app based on HR, on operations, um, on whatever. So think about how your business functions are set up, um, for example. If you're a much larger organization, you could probably create subgroups of those particular areas. So within your finance team, you might have a, um, a market area, you might have a, um, uh, a commodities area, you might have a lending area, you might have a, um, a payments team. So maybe those are how you want to set up your apps ultimately, because you might have um, um, reporting applications that might be very that might be very specific to that particular area of your organization okay and so once you actually decide what these apps will be that is how you then set up your workspaces okay so your workspaces will be um, you know your customers workspace or your finance or some sort of we've, we've got one called internal products and this is where we put our learning map marketing operations sales and then we always also actually have a testing space here. So we've created another workspace, which is where we do sort of just experiments, uh, where we just tr try out things. And it's, it's sort of like a sandbox. It's not something that we actually put into production or we um, say that, um, or, or that we like published out there to everyone. Like it's just literally us testing things really quickly. And so instead of um, creating, instead of creating like um, workspaces that have just like hundreds of different reports, it's 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 a matter of thinking how you can segment your groups so that your apps make sense, right? Your apps make sense. So you see here that in terms of the reports in here, everything relates to our marketing app, like analytics, keywords, backlinks, competitors, digital advertising, email marketing, Google Search Console, these are all marketing type things, right? And so they make complete sense to um, um, move up into our app. And then on the right hand side here, we can very quickly switch 
what we want to show in the app and what we don't want to show it, show in the app. So if we are working on some of these like really key reports, but they're not quite finished and they're still in draft or they're still being worked on, we don't need to include them in the app. We can just have them sitting in our workspace as we improve them. So the app is, is kind of like versioning control as well, where you um, once you select a yes here, and you start distributing the insights in the app, that, that is what I would classify as like a production ready or or that report is live and is considered the version of truth, okay? But everything else, if it's just sitting inside of here, is sort of on draft at the moment because it's not actually included in my app, okay? So how did I actually get this all, all sorted in, 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 um, internally and, and sort of in our minds around how we wanted to frame this up, right? Okay, so you've got to just maybe like this is just the initial planning, right? And I've seen this many times before that workspaces can just get so congested. I mean, you can have like 50 different workspaces in here and it just looks just looks silly, right? And so you want to try and get this under control. You want to try and get um, a um, intuitive amount of workspaces so that stakeholders like or individuals within the organization know which ones are relevant to them, okay? And it's also important from a security perspective, like which data sets do you want which, which people to see internally? So just building a framework around this is absolutely key. And how did we do it internally? Well, what we did was we created teams in the Analyst Hub, so we created teams. And so we've, I've got a few different um, teams here. In this particular case, we, um, we created one called the Enterprise DNA Devs. And within uh, these teams, we created projects that made sense, like that were going to align with workspaces. So I broke down uh, different areas of, 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 of the business that were important from a from a, an analysis point of view and a reporting point of view. And some of them were um, evolved from sort of like the business functions that we've created, but some just made sense from an analysis perspective because of what I wanted my app to ultimately look like and the information I wanted in that particular app. Um, and so I broke it down by marketing, sales, customers, internal products, finance, and operations. You know, the other thing, you know, don't, you can think a little bit outside the box here as well. Maybe, maybe you want a workspace, which is just management or, um, or the board or, um, or a, a certain layer of, um, uh, personnel within your organization, you know, something like that. And that, that is actually fine as well, because an app is going to be very specific to those particular people, right? And maybe you don't want others to have access to that particular workspace or to that particular app. Okay, so that's how we broke it down um, here. Now, I just want to show you this one other document that um, we utilized um, just for um, brainstorming. Okay, so you see here that you can actually create some Kanban boards inside of um, of the Analyst Hub. And so what I did initially was I, I said, okay, well, let's let's break it down here and let's have a look at, let's list down, let's do a sort of a, a brainstorm, a mind map of all of the different things that are relevant to these particular areas. So we got, so again, we've got marketing, sales, finance, customers, operations, and then all of the different reports that would look good under there. And when you actually just set things out like this, this is how you can get a little bit of coordination and organization around what you are doing when you are working through your Power BI implementation, okay? Instead of just going all out in self-service and creating more issues than you had before, you know, this is a way to actually just be a lot more considered and uh, um, sensible in how you are actually implementing and deploying Power BI. You know, by doing this, you can you can actually um, quickly work out, okay, well, which data sets should we feed into all of these different areas, uh, like all of these different workspaces? What are common data sets that we could maybe set up as data flows? You know, and so on and so forth. So just actually going through the process of doing this can really speed up and um, and also prevent you from losing a lot of lost time and duplicate and you know and, and having a lot of duplicate um, effort and how you how you actually go about your implementation. What you can also do, and what, what we also did internally as well, is we also, um, uh, within here, we we created data sources. We created a data sources, um, um, like a brainstorm as well, where we sort of worked out, okay, what are all the data sources that we have? And this is, again, a very important um, um, process of just like understanding your pipe, your pipes, your data pipes, 
right? And how those data pipes also feed into your different workspaces. And so again, it's just it's just all this um, all this little all this work sort of in behind the scenes is just um, the process that I think is best recommended to um, to evaluate like what uh, to to sort of just have a plan, have a plan of what you should be doing um, with um, your your governance and also just you know your implementation of um, important analysis in these respective areas that you select for your um, for your um, for your apps and for your workspaces okay so hopefully hopefully you got a, got some good insight out of that right so you know this is how we do it how we do it and some some recommendations on how you can do it and look, I, I just know it just gives you um, a lot better framework um, f you know it, it sort of frames your, your own mind around how you can actually do this because it can seem like um, quite a insurmountable amount of work like if you just go like wow I've got to, I've got to analyze everything in my organization now okay where do I start like this is this is how you can sort of make it a lot more achievable and then start allocating resources um, into specific areas to make it happen okay so that's all I wanted to go over there hopefully you enjoyed that one um, you know governance is, is is something that is is is, is definitely sort of front of mind and um, I'm hearing a lot is um, there's a lot of questions about it um, especially as Power BI is, is, is really taking hold in a lot of organizations. So, so I really enjoy going through this sort of content and hopefully you enjoyed it as well. Okay, take care. Look forward to next time. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.